So we are going to start by designing the entire website from start to finish and we are going to do this one component at a time using HTML and CSS. When we are through with the design, we will then proceed to introduce PHP and MySQL database to make the website dynamic and database driven. So to start with the design, I have already created an empty project folder called blog. Inside this folder, let's create a file called index.html and we'll begin by filling it up with some boilerplate HTML code. The title of the page is simply going to be blog and we are going to link to a CSS file called style.css which we will create very soon. In the body of the page, we are just going to drop a header element here and we will leave it empty for now. Then we will create our style.css file which we linked to earlier. The first selector in this file is going to be our header element and we'll begin by giving this header element a width of 100%, a height of 80 pixels, a background color of white, a border bottom of 1 pixels solid, this color that I prepared in the background. We'll give it a padding top and bottom of 0 pixels and then left and right of 8 rem. And in case you're wondering the size of this 8 rem, 1 rem is usually equivalent to about 16 pixels by default in most browsers. So 8 rem is like 8 times 16 pixels. And this is the space between the ends of the browser and the beginning of uh, the comp components within the navigation bar. Okay, next we'll display this using flex and we'll make sure we set justify contents to space between so that they can be spaced between the two main subcomponents within the header and then we'll do align items center so that they can be centralized vertically okay so that's all for now i'm just going to put a temporary red border so that we can see um what the header looks like right now as we are starting it now we can open this project on our browser to see how it looks and there are two ways in which we can do this one is the very simple way where we'll just go to the file on our, our machine and then we'll double click on the index.html file and this will open on our browser the second method which is the one i recommend or which is the one i prefer is to navigate to the project folder using a command line and then running npx live server so you hit enter this is if you don't have live server installed which i imagine is the case for most of you but if you have live server installed like me and when i say installed i mean installed on your laptop or your machine not on the project itself so you can just do live server straight away and it's going to uh, serve that page up on your browser so i can already identify two issues with our navigation bar the first is that it's it, it seems it appears to be wider than the width of the page even though we gave it a width of 100 uh, percent so that's the first issue if you try scrolling it horizontally you're going to notice a scroll bar at the bottom which proves that the navigation bar is uh, uh, wider than the 100 percent we assigned it the second issue is that we have some margin around the navigation bar even though we do not assign any margin to it okay so to fix these issues uh, beginning with the uh, overextended width now when you assign a width to an element and then you go ahead and assign a, bar, a padding to that element by default the browser is going to uh, increase the width or it's going to add the padding onto the width so the padding will be pushing on the width so that it now becomes the width plus the padding. Now, in order to disable this behavior, we are going to use another CSS property called box sizing and we'll give it a value of border box. So when we do this, we are basically instructing our browser that when we assign a width to an element and we, uh, we subsequently assign a padding or a border in cases where the border is very thick when we assign these two to that element 
and then we instruct it to do our box sizing border box we are basically saying that it should stick with the width that we assign to it so even if we come and add a padding it should include that padding inside that width and it shouldn't extend beyond the width so if we go to our browser and we reload you're going to notice now that the navigation bar is no longer wider than the page itself and this property is something that we are going to need um, in almost every element that we are assigning a width to so i usually just make this the default property or the default behavior on all elements to which it can be applied okay so what i have done here is i have selected all elements on, on the page and I have given them a box sizing CSS property with value of border box. So whenever we assign the width on anything, we are basically telling the browser that stick to this width, no matter the padding that we apply to this element. All right, so that has fixed one of our issues. The next one is the margins that we see around our navigation bar. Now, the reason for these margins is that by default, most browsers usually apply a default uh, margin on the page, which is the reason for this space we see here. So in order to fix this, we are going to select the HTML element and the body tag, and we are going to clear all margin and padding on these elements. So we'll just say margin zero, padding zero. And then while we are here, we are going to give it a width of 100%, a background color, of this color that I prepared in the background. We're going to give it a font family of, uh, I'll start typing Apple system and it is going to auto complete with this font, uh, this Apple system font. So if you didn't get the auto complete, you could just pause the video and copy this font. Another thing I would like to add is the WebKit WebKit font smoothing and uh, we'll give it a value of anti-alias. Now this is a property that usually makes our fonts to be very smooth and clean and very good looking. Uh, I think this works only when the user is viewing the page using a an Apple device. Uh, I'm not sure if it works with Windows, but it makes the website look great. It makes the font on the website look great. Okay, um, we refresh. And as you can see, the margin has been eliminated and our navigation bar is perfectly a hundred percent wide i'm going to remove the red border too and that's cool the next thing we need to do is to add elements within our navigation bar as you can see on the finished project the navigation bar is made up of two sections the logo to the left and the navigation menu itself on the right so let us open our index.html and inside the header tag we will add a link uh, to wrap our logo around because we want our logo to be clickable and we will give this link a few classes logo wrapper and td none we are going to define the css world for those classes later on for now we will add a div here and inside this div will provide a text block which will represent the logo but we want to separate the letter B inside a span of its own because we want it to we want it to assume different styles from the other letters as seen on the finished project. Okay, so that is it for our logo. The next thing we are going to be working on is the navigation menu itself. So the navigation menu is going to be wrapped around an HTML nav element and the navigation menu itself is going to be an unordered list with a class of nav menu and within this unordered list we will have some list elements each of them having a class of nav item and a nav item will have a link that will link to the resp respective pages so we are going to duplicate this a number of times 
and then uh, change the text accordingly. Now the next step is to add a couple of drop downs. One of them is going to be under the best articles item and the other is going to be under the logged in user as we can see on the finished project. Okay, so to add a drop down, we are going to make this very easy. We simply come to the nav item to which we want to add the drop down. And then on the same level as the link within that nav item, we are going to add another unordered list and give it a class of drop down. Within this unordered list, we are going to have some list items, each of them also having a link within them. And then we'll give it a name. Notice that we don't assign a list item class to the list items within the drop down. We don't need to do that. So we duplicate this a number of times and edit it accordingly. And then in order to add this to the uh, locked in usernames item, we will just copy this. And again, on the same level as the link in the nav item, we are going to paste it and then we modify it. So the two items under the username item are going to be the dashboard, the link to the dashboard for admin users, and of course the logout link. A refresh, and uh, this looks good. Okay, so this, that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to start applying the design for our navigation bar.